These are 25 reasons why not to move to Mexico. The noise. Mexico can be so freaking loud from the super loud trucks and motorcycles driving down the road to the cars with the megaphones blaring, selling whatever it is that they have to sell. And in addition to that, you'll have dogs barking from the roofs. In fact, right there, there's a dog barking on the roof right now. And then there will be lots of parades and celebrations, especially if you're in the center part of the city like I am right now here in Querétaro. And in addition to that, Mexicans love to party and loud parties often go late into the night. You know what the most deadly creature on earth is? It's the mosquito. And since in Mexico we're getting down into the tropics, we have dengue fever here. And it is very common for people to get dengue fever. In fact, I'm pretty lucky that I've been living here and around the country for five years and I haven't gotten it yet. But it can be super serious and I hope I never get it, but it is something to consider if you're thinking about living in Mexico. And in addition to dengue, there's also other mosquito-borne illnesses here as well, like Zika, for example. I know that I'm gonna get like a thousand comments on this video that are like, if you hate it so much, why don't you just go back to your country? Well, there's a lot more that I love about Mexico than dislike, and not all the things on this list apply to me. In fact, I could live anywhere in the world, but I choose to live in Mexico because I love it here. So keep that in mind as we go on to the next one. I don't drink beer, but I hear from craft beer lovers all the time that they're super disappointed with the selection here in Mexico. And even when they find a good brewery, like one of the better ones here, they still say that it just doesn't compare to the good craft breweries in the U.S. Next one. Although most things here are quite a bit more affordable than the U.S. or Canada, if you're looking for a really cheap country to live in, you might want to look elsewhere, like a place like Nicaragua or Cambodia. Your money is going to go a whole heck of a lot further than it will here in Mexico. To give you an idea of prices, most things here, most services, rents, doctor's appointments, things like that are going to cost about one half to one third of what they cost in Phoenix, Arizona. And that leads me into my next thing, and that is that certain items here are actually more expensive than they are in the US. Because in addition to the cost of shipping it here, Everything you buy here includes a 16% sales tax. So if you want the new iPhone, that's probably gonna cost you about 20% more than whatever you would pay in the US. And also things like name brand clothing, basically anything you would find in a mall is probably also going to be more expensive than it would be in the United States. And in addition to that, like in the US, if you're shopping there, you can find so many great sales and clearance deals and those amazing sales, don't really happen much here. So it's a lot harder to find really great deals on clothing here than it is in the United States. I'm in the beautiful Querétaro Central right now, and many of the foreigners who come to this colonial city actually want to live here in Centro. And the plaza I'm in right now started being developed around 500 years ago, as did the surrounding areas. So a lot of the homes here are quite old and if you want to live in one of the homes here in Central, you're probably not gonna be able to flush your toilet paper. Now, I've lived in quite a few homes across Mexico, and I've been able to flush my toilet paper in every single one of them, but that's because I've been seeking out newer accommodations, ones that have been built more recently. And if you're into that older style of home, there's a good chance that you're not gonna be able to flush your teepee, and you're gonna to have to put it paste down into the trash can. Gross. Something that might take a little bit of adjusting to in Mexico is that public bathrooms are not free. If you want to use a free bathroom, you can do it at home, at a friend's house, at a restaurant, or at a mall. But anywhere else, you're gonna to have to pay for that. Like here, if you want to go to the bathroom at a convenience store, it's probably gonna be about five pesos. And a lot of times they won't even have soap to wash your hands. Sometimes they won't even provide any toilet paper. And many times it's nasty. So it's like you're paying five pesos for this gross bathroom. It's like, what am I even paying for? So that can be a little bit of an adjustment. Okay, I promise I'm almost done with the bathroom topic, but the next thing is Montezuma's Revenge. Just this week, I had food poisoning and it was miserable. I ate something bad 
and I was sick for almost a week. Normally when I get food poisoning, I'm better like the next day, but it was four days later and I started getting worse. So then I went to the doctor and got antibiotics and now I'm finally feeling better. But man, that was a miserable few days. So here you can't drink the water and you're gonna have to be a bit more careful about what you eat so you can avoid Montezuma's revenge. Right here on the corner, there's a pile of trash that's waiting for the garbage people to come pick it up. And this is pretty common. Like trash is collected different here. People just put their trash out on the street corner in certain cities like in Puerto Vallarta, for example, they put it in the middle of many of the streets. And if you were like, well, I'm gonna do this a little bit cleaner and I'm gonna buy a garbage can and I'm gonna put my trash out in a garbage can, well, that's probably gonna get stolen and then the trash will just be left there. So things work a little bit differently here. And then I pan up here and there's a tangled mess of wires. And that tangled web of wires you see up there, well, that's pretty common here. As a matter of fact, one time I was at home looking out my window about five feet away at this web of wires like that and they started on fire. There was a fire literally right outside of my window. It was crazy. But building codes and safety codes work different here. Like if a safety inspector came to Mexico from the US, they would be like, how is anyone still alive here? We have to shut the entire country down. As an example of lack of safety features, a lot of times you'll have stairs like this without a railing on this side. As a matter of fact, when we first came to look at this house, when we were considering renting here, this railing did not exist. And we said, we're interested in the home, but we'll only rent if you install a railing here. And they did. As I'm walking around Centro here, I was actually thinking, hey, these sidewalks are pretty nice. They're nice and wide, and there aren't a whole lot of problems with them. Like, there are some problems, like here's a little hole right there. And I've seen holes way worse than that, like four feet deep, three feet wide. If you weren't paying attention, you would be eating concrete for sure. But here in Queretaro, they're pretty good. But I mean, if you're in a wheelchair, there's a lot of times where you're not gonna be able to pass. Like I'm coming up to a pole right here where you wouldn't be able to get past this pole. But a lot of times you'll have even less space than that. For example, I'll have to like shimmy to the side here next to a tree to get by or just go off the sidewalk completely. So if you're in a wheelchair or you have limited mobility, well then, that might be a serious consideration when it comes to moving to Mexico, because although it's getting better, and if you move to a nice neighborhood, well, then they're probably going to have handicap accessible businesses and things like that. But if it's not in a new neighborhood, well, then you're probably gonna have a lot of trouble getting around. If you sat down and you made a list of all the foods and products you absolutely cannot live without, I would be willing to bet there's at least a few things on that list that are difficult or impossible to find here. So that's something to consider. There will almost certainly be products that you consider completely necessary that you just can't get here. Now there are some solutions, like maybe you'll just pick some up on your trips back to wherever it is you came from or something like that, but I guarantee you there will be things you cannot find here. Another reason you might not want to move to Mexico are the natural disasters. Earthquakes and hurricanes are the two primary ones. And in some parts of the country, earthquakes can be really scary. Like in Acapulco, for example, or in Oaxaca or in Mexico City, they can get some really bad earthquakes. And hurricanes, I mean, there's some parts of the country that get hit hard. Now, my thoughts on natural disasters is you just learn to deal with whatever natural disasters are in your area, but still, it's something to consider. I know there's a lot of people who are retirement age who have zero interest in trying to learn a new language. My mom once told me, she's like, I'm 60 years old. I'm not gonna learn a new language, are you kidding? So. If you do not want to learn a language, well, only about 12% of Mexico's population knows English. I mean, this number is gonna be much higher if you're in a tourist area or if you're in one of the few expat enclaves around the country. But if you're not willing to learn some Spanish, well, then Mexico might not be a great option for you. Prices have been going up a lot here in Mexico. And honestly, a lot of people are really, really struggling to get by. Like, I know someone who makes like 450 bucks a month and has three kids to support and $450 to pay 
all of the bills. So, I mean, when you're in a position like that, it can be really hard when prices go up 10%, 15%. And you know, as the prices are going up, I've noticed that a higher and higher percentage of the population are blaming foreigners for those increasing prices. And as a foreigner, it gets hard to hear that repeatedly, that, that it's my fault for someone else's struggles. So that might be something to consider if you're thinking about moving to Mexico, because if it becomes more and more widespread that a big percentage of the population just doesn't want foreigners here at all, well then it might not be a great place for people like you and I to live. The next reason you might want to consider somewhere else is that the peso has been really strong relative to the dollar recently. So right now, your dollars would buy about 10% fewer pesos than they did a year ago, or about 30% fewer than from the peak a couple of years back. So that's something to seriously consider because if it continues heading in that direction, well then your cost of living, if you're bringing dollars here, is going to go up and up and up. People moving to Mexico need to seriously consider their health care options. For example, you can get private health care here, and if you're like 30 years old, well then maybe you'll be able to get it for $50 a month, but if you're like 65 years old, maybe you're gonna have to pay like $350 a month. And if something like that doesn't fit into your budget, well then maybe Mexico isn't right for you. And the private health care here is not going to cover any pre-existing condition. So if you have a pre-existing condition and you have coverage for that back where you came from, well then that's something to consider as well. Now, I know some people here buy like a medevac service that in case they need it, in case they need to be evacuated, well then that covers them to get them back to their country very quickly. And a lot of people will go back for some medical services, but then get most of their medical services taken care of here in Mexico, because most of the time people's copay in the US is actually more than the cost of the entire service here. So even if you don't have medical insurance, you can still usually get by paying less. But I mean, the older you are, the bigger that risk is that one day you're going to come across some situation where you're gonna be hit with a major medical bill. And hospitals here work differently. Like, for example, I know someone who had a heart attack and needed immediate emergency heart surgery. And the doctors were like, okay, we can do this, but you have to pay 100,000 pesos right now. That was the cost of the surgery, about 5,000 US dollars. And if they didn't have the money, the surgery wasn't going to happen. So if you don't have the money for a major surgery like that, you could literally die because of it. And by the way, in most cases for those emergency medical services, either cash or credit is going to be just fine. So if you have sufficient credit limit on your credit card, well then that's going to be okay too, as long as they can get their money before they do the surgery. Something that's really hard for a lot of people living in Mexico, and this is for me too, is seeing all the street dogs who are suffering. Now there's some places with a lot more street dogs than other places, and in a lot of places they're well fed, but damn, I've seen some really sad situations in many places around the country, and it is heartbreaking. Throughout my five years living in Mexico, as someone who works online and has to upload videos, internet speeds and internet reliability has been a huge frustration for me. Generally, the bigger the city, the better the internet is going to be, but even if you're in a small town, some small towns you can still get fast fiber optic speeds but here i'm living in queretro and i do have fiber optic internet at my place however the internet goes out like once a week it's super frustrating and i've tried to contract an internet service with another company but there's only one company as of right now that provides fiber optic at my location and this company sucks but the last place i lived I had super fast speeds and the internet never went out once in 18 months. So that was amazing. So I've had great experiences and I've had horrible experiences and I've lived in places where the internet was super slow. One reason why you might not want to move to Mexico is if you're hoping to get a job here because working as an employee here, you're going to be paid significantly less 
than what you would earn for the same job in the US. To give you an idea of what you might be earning, a nurse here might make $600 a month, an engineer might make $1,500 a month, $2,000 a month, and if you can make $2,000 a month as an employee here, you're in the top 1% of wage earners, so that puts you up there with the doctors and such. Another reason you might not want to move to Mexico is that things are just done differently here, and a lot of things can be really frustrating for us coming from the US or Canada. I'll give you one example of a recent frustration I had. So I signed up for internet, fiber optic internet with this company Telmex, and they said they would be installing it in about a week, and then two or three weeks went by, we didn't hear anything from them. So then we contacted them and they're like, oh yeah, we actually don't have fiber optic in that area yet. Uh, we only have copper cables, so yeah, that's why we didn't come. And it's like, well, why didn't you tell us? Send us an email, how about? Hey, sorry, we thought we had service there, but unfortunately we don't yet. But then, six months later, six months, I get an email from them saying, your internet will be installed in a few days. It's like, what? What? No, I thought that was canceled many months ago, and now you say you're going to install it? And then that in a few days email was about a month ago, and I keep getting those emails, so who knows if we're ever going to get that Telmex internet here. And another reason is, internet here can be slow. Generally, the bigger the city, the faster and better internet options are going to be available. But in a lot of small towns, oh my gosh, the internet has been painfully slow. Now, a lot of times, if you're renting short term, you're subject to whatever the Airbnb host or the hotel purchases. And in that case, a lot of times you're going to be stuck with really slow internet. Now, if you have your own home, like your own long-term rental or your own home that you bought, well, you can probably get faster speeds. But again, in like these small towns, a lot of times those fast speeds still aren't available. One reason a lot of people think that Mexico is not for them or end up leaving Mexico is because they just cannot stand the police corruption. Now, this police corruption happens in a few pockets of the country mostly. So that's mostly like the area near San Diego, around Mexico City, and around Cancun and the Riviera Maya. Outside of those three areas, it doesn't happen a whole lot. And thankfully, in five years of living in Mexico, I haven't experienced it yet. but. I know people who have had a lot worse luck than I have when it comes to dirty cops. Another reason why you might choose someplace other than Mexico is safety. If you want a place where you can walk around alone any time of day or night and not have to have any worries about it, well then, maybe Mexico isn't right for you. A lot of people have this perception here that if you leave the resort, something terrible is gonna happen to you. Like you'll get um, robbed or murdered or raped or something horrible like that. That's definitely way overblown, that perception. But if you look at a list of like the 10 most dangerous cities in the world, I just saw one of these, and something like five of them were here in Mexico. So Mexico certainly has its safety issues. There are some things you can do to make your life more safe. For example, living in one of the safer cities. We live in Querétaro, which is considered one of the safer cities in the country. Also, something else we did is we rented a house in a nicer gated neighborhood, so that increases your safety level quite a bit. So things like that, you can exercise caution, get a security system, get a dog. There's things you can do to make your life safer here, but safety is one reason why some people choose to not live here. If you're an American and you want to move somewhere that's nothing like where you live, well, that is one reason why you might not want to choose Mexico. Because especially in the bigger cities here, it's becoming much more Americanized. There's lots of US businesses moving in. For example, here in Querétaro, we have HEB, we have Walmart, Costco, PF Chang's, Starbucks, Burger King, McDonald's. Soon we're gonna have like 50 Tim Hortons. And the list of US and Canadian companies goes on and on and on. There are so many of of them here and I don't think this trend is slowing down anytime soon. In fact, I think it's speeding up and most of the locals here, I think they welcome it because they haven't had access to these stores their whole life and I, I think a lot of them want it. So I think this is something that's going to continue the Americanization of the big cities here. Most visitors can come to Mexico and get 180 days visa free. 
However, if you want to stay here longer than 180 days, you're probably going to have to get legal residency. And the most common ways to qualify for residency are through the financial requirements. And as of 2023, the financial requirements are either about $3,300 in monthly income or approximately $50,000 US dollars in savings and investments. This can be in the form of a 401k or an IRA or some other kind of retirement or investment account. That's perfectly okay in addition to bank balances. But if you can't qualify for residency via one of those ways, well then maybe Mexico isn't the right place for you. Now, if you can't qualify one of those ways, there are other ways you can get it. However, those are by far the most popular ways to get residency. There's a lot of Americans and Canadians that come vacation in Mexico, usually to some popular beach destination. And after coming here, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. We should move here. But what happens with these popular tourist destinations is it attracts a lot of scammers. So if you're coming to live in one of these places, you're gonna to have to deal with scammers and that's just kind of a fact of life here. As a matter of fact, I just went to Cancun and scammers there tried to put me in jail. I made a video about that so you can watch that one next and I'll see you over there.